Um, hello. Uh, I think we can start since it's already 12. Um, hello, my name is Lily. I'm a marketing specialist at Funding Box. Uh, welcome to the Q&A meeting related to the um, Q&A uh, related to the Q&A uh, of the Elise uh, first open call. Uh, during today's meeting, uh, you will learn some tips on how to apply and improve your proposal. And as you probably know, like there are around two weeks left until the end of, uh, of the open call. So we hope that this Q&A will uh, help you successfully submit your application on time. So before we start the Q&A, I would like to um, inform you that uh, this webinar is uh, being recorded for internal purposes, as mentioned in the registration form uh, you filled. And uh, at the end of the presentation, you will have time to ask your questions. Uh, you can find a questions panel uh, somewhere on your screen, I think on the right uh, side on the top. So you can write down your questions and uh, yeah. And uh, I would like to introduce a speaker of today's meeting, uh, Ursula Sobek. Uh, she is a project uh, manager of Elise at Funding Box. Uh, since 2004, Ula has been involved in innovation, IT, R&D and startup related projects on a national and international scale, obtaining over 30 million euros for external clients. And currently she also works uh, as a project ma manager in AI4U. Um, so welcome Ula, thank you for joining us and uh, the stage is yours. Hello, hello, thank you Lily for the introduction and welcome to this webinar. And at the beginning, I would like to a little bit introduce you to Founding Box. Uh, so the Founding Box, um, we Founding Box have been uh, in a founding business for close to 40, 30 years and we've been in the deep tech ecosystem for uh, 10 years. And during this long period, we have been meeting entrepreneurs and innovators and we understand, understand their and your needs. Uh, we know the tension that finding funding is difficult and long process. And also uh, we know that uh, making connection and real business work with the best. And uh, all this led us to create a solution. Uh, so on one side, Funding Box is uh, the go-to funding platform for entrepreneurs. So by providing an ecosystem of funding opportunities, know-how, deep connection and tools, we are now one of the largest European deep tech ecosystems. On the other hand, Founding Box provides also the solution for corporate and investor to help identify and integrate the best startups and SMEs. When one and two come together, founding champions are made. Also, uh, we have a solution for you. If you are struggling with founding, we have Money Box. Uh, so, um, how normally the case case founding works? So you apply for funding and uh, we design a very easy step. Uh, and remember that Funding Box will distribute uh, 100 million euro in the next three years. Then you can get funding and enter support program receiving independent support, money, mentoring, training. And we have already um, supported uh, 195 uh, startups and we are currently running 43 uh, support programs. At least but uh, um, not last piece of this founding cake, you can get connection by uh, now. Our grantees uh, got uh, 300 agreements with corporates. So let's dive into one of the founding opportunities that is the topic of today. It's Elise Open Call. Uh, at the beginning, you are probably curious what it's about. What's Elise about? So um, Elise uh, is a project. Um, uh, based on uh, machine learning and AI excellence network. So it's kind of network of uh, AI research hubs, aims to uh, make European um, Union and Europe uh, competitive in AI through uh, this uh, network of excellence. And it's important to remember that ELIS is based on ELIS network, network of AI and machine learning researchers. Uh, what ELIS is offering for you, so um, benefits, especially money, uh, 16 luckiest SMEs and startup uh, could receive uh, support during six month period. It will be up to 70,000 uh, euro in the lump sum to develop novel AI based application and solution in one of Ellie's focus areas. Also, we are offering uh, visibility throughout Ellie's online channels and events and also dissemination in the Ellie's community. 
uh, who can apply, what type of applicants we are looking for. So SMEs, including startups. It's uh, important to remember that applicants at the moment of applying when you submit your application must be registered as an entity in one of eligible countries. What are these countries? So member states of European Union, associated countries and also United Kingdom. Uh, please rem remember that Alice partners or the affiliated organization or employees are not able to apply, are not eligible. Uh, what type of project can be founded by Alice? So project based on AI or machine learning application that address development and implementation of technology and system in at least one of focus areas. Uh, focus areas are best based on LE's uh, research programs, but are not limited to them. So if your idea, your project will use some AI or machine learning technique or solution and uh, will address some high societal impact problem or uh, have some economic value for European Union, it also can be supported and funding by LE's. Uh, here you will find the list of uh, focus areas, so it's quite a broad approach. Uh, probably most of your project can be allocated in one of these focus areas, so it's um, from geometric deep learning, uh, through natural intelligence, health, and uh, to symbolic machine learning. You can learn more about each focus area uh, by reading Annex uh, one to guide for applicants. You will find guide for applicants on Ellie's Open Call site website in a section documents. Uh, what is ideal project? So uh, it's project provided by, of course, SME or startup, and this project should fit to one of uh, um, uh, focus area, and it should be uh, use cases of machine learning technologies. It should be at um, TRL 6 or 7 and uh, projects should be supported by scientific advisor. And this, we come to a question, do you really need a scientific advisor? It's not mandatory, but yes, to have your project su successfully finished, deliver your um, goal, yes, we strongly advise you to have scientific advisor. And uh, this person uh, is a researcher that you invite. Uh, who agree to advise you uh, in developing your uh, AI or machine learning application or service or solution. Uh, we recommend to have scientific advisor from Ellie's community, but it's not mandatory. You can have your advisor from all over the world, from different networks. Um, the requirement is that this, uh, this researcher should uh, have PhD in a field of your project. So it there should be some connection between uh, his uh, knowledge and your uh, your product, your idea. Um, what is also important, a scientific advisor must be independent person, so um, shouldn't have any formal link with your uh, organization. So shouldn't be employee or board of um, part of board of members or stakeholders or so on. When it comes to NDA that you maybe would like to sign with your scientific advisor, it's okay, we do not treat this as a um, formal link. And remember that the role of advisor is strictly uh, advisory, so he will not participate in your work, uh, in development work. He just provides you some advice and uh, the role of general role of such uh, advisor is to create a connection between business, between industry and between academia. Um, we um, advise you to um, invite scientific advisor at the beginning of the preparation stage to have them ready, agreed uh, before you submit your application. In this case, you can um, get extra points uh, during uh, evaluation. Uh, you can also look for advisor later, but uh, this is mandatory. You should have your advisor assigned before the jury day. During the jury day, this is a part of the uh, selection process. Uh, your scientific advisor should participate and uh, present uh, their opinion about uh, your idea or solution and inform why he or she would like to support you. And here you can see some uh, project examples. Uh, as you can see on my uh, left side, um, it's an example of a small IT company from Austria. Uh, this company offers uh, toxicity assessment. 
and would like to uh, uh, receive support from Elise uh, to include recent graphs, neural networks uh, for toxicity prediction and offer a web application to their customers. On my right side, uh, you can see a different um, uh, example of a project. It's IT startup uh, from Belgium of a chatbot for customer services. And compa this company applied to Elise Co in order to obtain access to recent machine learning techniques and uh, receive support from advisor. Uh, how the open code process looks like. So now we are at the beginning of a process, so we are at the proposal submission stage. So by uh, 1st of July, you can submit your proposal uh, using an uh, online form available on the Open Call website. Uh, after this, uh, when the call will be closed, uh, we will do um, pre-scoring. If a number of applica applications will be higher than 100, then we will apply pre-scoring. And uh, after this, we will also perform eligibility check and based on criteria included in the guide for applicants. Mm -hmm. After this, uh, all eligible applications will go through expert evaluation. So we will invite uh, external experts, experts in AI, machine learning and business to check your proposal based on evaluation criteria. And each proposal will be uh, evaluated by two independent experts. Then um, all proposal above a threshold, threshold is 10 point out of 15, will be reviewed during a consensus meeting. At the end, 24, the best proposal, will be invited to the jury day. And jury day, this is an event. This time it will be online event due to COVID. And you will have a chance to pitch your project at the front of jury and present your idea and also um, you should invite your uh, scientific advisor to be there with you and provide also feedback about your project. Uh, at the end, we will select 16 best SME and startup, and this um, finalist will be invited to formal check and then uh, to start preparation of a subgrant agreement. After signature of subgrant agreement, they will be beneficiaries and they can receive uh, funding. Uh, Please remember that you can check uh, the sub grant agreement templates on our Open Core website. It's available. And uh, however, this is a template. Please remember the, well, that we do not negotiate uh, the provisions of the agreement. So it's better to, to check it before applying. Uh, when it comes to criteria, so we have two types of criteria eligibility criteria and then scoring criteria. So um, eligibility criteria. Um, we will check if your project has European dimension. It means that um, it's a question um, if uh, your project can bring some value to European Union. Uh, then we will check, of course, if your application was submitted um, using our online form and uh, before the deadline. Uh, you can submit only one proposal uh, in case you submit more than one proposal only the last submitted proposal will be evaluated. Uh, your proposal must be written in English and all sections must be completed. We also uh, check um, if you declare any potential conflict of interest between you and Alice consortium partners. Uh, your proposal should address at least one of focus area, as I mentioned but uh, also could uh, present the groundbreaking and quality solution in terms of machine learning, which is outside the focus area. Uh, please remember that we do not accept entities under uh, liquidation or with difficulties, according to commission regulation. We also check if a project is based on um, your original work and uh, the IP rights are clear. So you can use, of course, um, rights uh, that belongs to third party, but this, this right must be clearly stated and uh, a possibility of using it must be declared. Uh, regarding the criteria for external evaluation, so we have three blocks of criteria, excellence, impact and implementation. Under excellence, we will evaluate uh, ambition, innovation, and your approach to solving um, the project. So we'll check if your solution is uh, beyond state of the art, uh, what's your approach, um, 
what's uh, the level of innovation within the market and if your idea or solution uh, can bring some level of differentiation. Under impact section, uh, we will check, or experts will check market opportunity for your idea. So um, it's all the pro, it's um, uh, uh, that it comes that your uh, solution solve uh, not only specific problem of some kind of customers, but could be uh, scalable, for example. We'll check the level of competition on the market and your strategy for um, scalability and uh, how you are going to enter uh, the market and commercialize your solution. Under implementation, we will uh, consider team resources and object objectives and resource validation. Regarding the team, we will ask you to present the person uh, who will be involved in the project development. And under resources, we receive some questions um, on our help desk about resources, what to include there. So uh, in case of this type of project, we will ask you to provide information about different type of resources that we're going to use. For example, some know-how, uh, some license that we're going to use, some technical infrastructure that is necessary to de develop your uh, solution. Under object objectives and results, um, we will check uh, if you properly describe uh, your objectives and results and if your work plan is structured in a right way. In addition, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you have scientific advisor assigned and confirmed, uh, you will be given one extra point to the overall score. Uh, how to apply? Uh, so please remember to do this before 1st of July, 1 o'clock, uh, Brussels time. Uh, visit uh, our alicefoundingbox.com uh, website. Uh, then you will be asked to log in and click to apply button. Then you will run your application, fill in all the required mandatory section, and you should submit your application before the deadline. Please remember that after submission, you can still edit your application if you find it necessary before the deadline. Uh, and uh, here you will have a quick summary. Uh, of uh, this open call. So we are going to select up to 16 SME and startup. Uh, this call will be repeated next year in the spring 2022. Maximum amount of support in formal lump sum is 60,000 euro. Uh, other benefits is visibility throughout Ellis online channels and dissemination in Ellis community. And we reach the end of the presentation. If you have any question, uh, this is the time for this part. Uh, thank you, Ula. Uh, it was a nice presentation. I see we have quite a lot of questions, so I think we should start answering them uh, now. And uh, if you if you want, I will read it aloud and, and you can answer. OK, so let's start from the first one from Margarita Bernabe. Uh, good morning. I have a question regarding resources section in the application form. Should we include all the resources we already have or also resources that are needed but not processed? Um, well, basically, uh, it would be nice if you know that you need some other resources and uh, that you are not owner of these resources right now. So, yes, it would be nice if you could also mention this one that you are going to uh, obtain uh, to uh, implement the project. Okay, so the, the next question is from Christian uh, Torero. Uh, at the beginning of page five of the guide for applicants, it is written that focus areas are not limited as long as the proposals will address high impact social and economic challenges using machine learning. However, in the application form on the web portal, it is mandatory to select one or more preset focus areas to be addressed in the project. Uh, bearing this overall info in mind, let's purpose, for example, that the project deals with time series analysis where RNNEs and LSTM networks can be used. In this case, the project would not address any LL NLP issue, but it would in effect make use of tools uh, peculiar uh, to NLP, assuming the project will address high impact social and economic challenges. Would it make sense to select NLP as focus area, justifying the choice with the tools that would be involved? Yeah. Yes, yes, um, that's correct suggestion for this, uh, this question. Um, you try to 
you, you should try to look for um, the area that fit the most or it's somehow related to your project and in the description box justify that um, you see the connection but uh, also you feel that um, your project maybe it's, it's not a fit the best this area but uh, has an, has uh, other impact and positive uh, can bring positive value uh, to machine learning uh, technique development um, okay one more question from Alexis for this uh, we have contacted a few scientific advisors but we did not uh, receive an answer is it mandatory for scientific advisors to belong to a list network no, it's not mandatory. You can have uh, your advisor um, out from outside the network. It could be any person from any country. The mandatory requirement is uh, that this person should have PhD in the area related to your project. Um, okay, another question is from uh, Holger Williams. Uh, does the ideal TRL of 6.7 apply to the app we try to improve with AI or does the AI development itself have to be at the level 6.7 already at the start of the project? Um, your um, general solution uh, or product or um, idea that you would like to develop should be at TRL 6 or 7 and should be developed further during the uh, six months period. But uh, we included a provision in, in Guide for Applicants uh, that if your uh, idea is on a lower TRL, it could be still accepted. If you provide uh, justification and roadmap how you are going to uh, reach this TRL 6 or 7 during uh, this support period. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next question from Anton Gakovic. Uh, does advisor must be in a field of AI or uh, can it be another field like health? Uh, no, this advisor should be, um, should have some um, PhD related to AI or machine learning. Um, another question from Simona Rombo. Uh, the scientific advisor should have a PhD in a field relevant for our project also of uh, if it is not on AI? Well, uh, the idea of Elise is to have a um, project related to AI and machine learning. So uh, we also look for an advice to have advisor uh, from this field because we would like to uh, create connection between uh, business and uh, network of excellence in machine learning and AI. So this, uh, this uh, scientific advisor should be kind of bridge between those two, let's say, world. So yes, uh, we would like to have a um, scientific advisor in a field of machine learning and artificial intelligence, or somehow connected to this. Uh, yeah, another yeah. question from Christoph Oberlander. Uh, can the scientific advisor have a non-AI background like finance? Well, I think that is, uh, you answered the question. The uh, yeah, uh, and one more question from Stephanie Demetrio. Uh, what is the expected number of applicants? Uh, probably um, the selected ones or... Yeah, mm. so uh, uh, at the first stage, um, after closing uh, the call, after the deadline, we will uh, do a first selection, applying a press scoring, and after this, we will going to select 100 applicants, 100 uh, proposals, and then after uh, the uh, external evaluation and consensus meeting, we would like to invite up to 24 applicants to participate in the jury day, and the final selection will be 16 startups uh, uh, or SMEs. Um, but of course, uh, the number, this is a target number, it could be lower and it will depend on the number and uh, quality of proposal that we are going to receive. Um, another question from Lars Berger. Uh, can we have more than one advisor? Yes, yes, you can have more than one, but uh, you should uh, specify the one who will be leading uh, this um, advisory. Uh, stuff. 
Mm -hmm. uh, a question from Luigi Palumbo. Uh, does the project need to be aimed at the direct revenue generation? Uh, we want to improve our prototype that helps people with allergies, intolerances to identify products that should avoid introducing AI capabilities. We use this project mostly as branding for our company and to collect anonymous data on product demand uh, popularity, which at the stage is quite far from monetization. Um... We would like to have some use cases of machine learning or AI uh, technique or implementation that will uh, could be some showcases and could bring some uh, value on the market. We also will be evaluating, experts will be evaluating um, the commercial strategy, um, the way of implementation on the market, your idea. So uh, it will be hard to receive good scores without having a clear commercialization strategy of course you can try maybe maybe uh, your idea will be uh, so well presented uh, that uh, will be supported anyway but take into account this that this is a part of uh, evaluation criteria and uh, it will be hard to to go to receive good scores without having this monetization aspects included yeah. Um, a question from Andrian Babish. Uh, may SA be paid for his advising service? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat, Livy? May SA, I, I think it's some abbreviature, SA. May SA Sci be paid advisor, for his? Yes, yes. Mm, if scientific advisor, and what was the next part of the question? Uh, uh, may scientific advisor be paid for his advising service? No, no. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the scientific advisor shouldn't have any connection, any formal link uh, with um, your uh, entity. So shouldn't receive money for participation in the project. This advisor also will not be paid by uh, Alice Consortium. So. Um, this is a tricky part, probably, and uh, a lot of you maybe can think about some advantages uh, for scientific advisor to be part of this. So one of the main common advantages is that um, researchers looking for some opportunities to publish some articles and get some impact points, and this cooperation could uh, result in some good publication. Also, some researchers would like to be involved in some co more commercial, close to market uh, project initiative, and this would be also the case. And also, maybe based on this cooperation here, uh, the further cooperation, uh, formal, uh, could be organized. So, uh, at the moment of applying and during the uh, project, there shouldn't be any link between you and your advisor. But later, of course, you can uh, advise, you can invite your advisor to be part of your idea or participate somehow in either your initiative and project. Um, and another question from Luisa Sofoclos. Uh, the does the focus area correspond to the company focus or the AI project? For example, can a food company request for a funding for an, an AI tool? Yes, of course. Um, your uh, company from different uh, fields can uh, apply to um, have some machine learning or AI application included in the business. So, of course, food uh, industry, food company as well could be part of this project. Um, a question from Irene Baena. Um, should the pitch in the final phase uh, be held by the CEO, CEO of the company or can any other member of the team present it? Uh, any uh, any members, any um, part of the project team, let's say, could uh, represent um, the participants. So uh, we are not uh, limited. You are not limited to send a CEO or any other top person to be there. But uh, any of you who have uh, right knowledge about the project can participate in it. Mm, okay. The the question from. Javad or Havad Hatami, uh, can they participate in other acceleration programs during the ELISE program? No, sorry, uh, we have this provision that uh, no. Uh, if you decide to participate in ELISE during this uh, six-month period, you cannot participate in any other acceleration program. 
And there is uh, a second question from the same press person. Uh, which TRL is more suitable for the proposed innovation? Is there any specific limitation? Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we would like to have application at six or seven TRL level at the beginning. But if your application is on the lower tier, you can still be supported. If you uh, provide a justification and a roadmap, how you are going to elevate uh, your TRL during um, the project, during the six month period. Mm -hmm. um, another question is from uh, Panagiotis Filianos. Um, if at the same time we apply to other funding box programs, does this have a chance to hurt either application or get it discarded? Uh, well, it's a hard question. Yeah, um, the problem will be when you will be selected in both uh, projects. So then you should choose because in this project in Elise, we have a limit that you uh, ma you could participate only in one support program at a time. But this will be a problem when you will be selected in two. So maybe it's worth trying in the two and increase your chance to be selected in one of um, of the program. Um, okay, uh, well, just a second, because I lost this question panel, I'm sorry, just a second, I will recover it, because I, I don't know why it disappeared, and I cannot see any questions. Hmm. Okay, can you see it, Ula, uh, too, or uh, is it only me seeing questions, or, okay, sorry, uh, yeah, I, I think I brought it back. So just a second, I'll try to find the one where we stopped. Um, um, okay, I, I'm not sure that is the next question, but I will just uh, read what I uh, see. Uh, from Ivan Tankoye, uh, would a freelancer be eligible as a possible additional resource for the project? Um, freelancer, mm, you mean as kind of subcontractor or some kind of uh, part of a team? Um, it depends because freelancer or um, we can, you should, we should start at the beginning. So to be applied, you should be a legal entity. So you should be some kind of company organization. So uh, no individuals are um, eligible to apply. But of course, startup or company can have some uh, team, some cooperation team, some cooperants, and uh, yes, and this team can include people who will be involved at, um, in different or different way to support uh, the project. Uh, please remember, remember that you will receive a lump sum uh, from Alice, and uh, we will not be taking uh, details of your expenses. However, uh, in case of any um, uh, um, check later uh, from your tax agency or so on, maybe you will be you will be asked to provide uh, the detailed estimation of people or costs um, that you spent on the project. So bear this in mind when creating uh, the budget and the costs uh, to uh, include um, the proper. Uh, the proper um, figures there and cost category. So subcontracting uh, in terms of um, freelancer, it could be okay, but um, it shouldn't be a core part of a team, just some kind of supporting mm -hmm. member. Um, okay, uh, the question from Igor Caron, while the program is supposed to last for six months, when does it start? Um, Based on a tentative schedule, uh, we uh, plan to have um, jury day uh, at the end of uh, September or at the beginning of October. So we are planning to have um, open this, uh, this support program, program, let's call it like this, uh, at the beginning of uh, November. Um, Another question from Andrew uh, Spink. Uh, what is the difference between ambition and innovation in the excellence section? The descriptions look si quite similar. Um, example, in a, an ambition, it says describe innovating approach and or new products. Okay, so um, ambition is uh, most about state of the art relation. And uh, so how you will 
place yourself, um, what, uh, what um, idea is your project groundbreaking. And innovation is most about um, providing information uh, how your solution is better than, than existing on the market. Um, okay, uh, another question from uh, Jacqueline Heinerman. Are there any restrictions on how to spend the money? Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> um, the money should be spent on a project, uh, so should be you should be able to justify the money uh, and uh, have some relation uh, between costs and uh, project uh, goals and uh, your activities under the project. Um, but of course, we in Elise will not be checking your accountancy and uh, details uh, of your costs, but um, we'll ask you to um, when, when we start uh, some grant agreement preparation, we'll ask you to provide some estimation of uh, how we are going to allocate your budget. So for example, how much money do you want to spend on uh, personal expenses, how much for um, subcontracting, how much for uh, good, um, purchasing of goods and other services. Um, another question from Liana Baptista. Besides the advisor identification, is there any other uh, specific uh, advisory um, uh, information regarding the advisory work plan, dedicated time that we will need to put on the application form? Uh, no, there's uh, no such indication. Uh, in Elise, uh, we do not provide any mentoring or training support or any other um, advisory services. So the uh, support is limited to, to uh, providing funding. Uh, how you are going to work with your uh, scientific advisor, it's up to you. We do not set any limit, any requirement, so no minimum, no maximum. It will depend on you, on your specific project and your relation with your scientific advisor. But please remember to at least book your scientific advisor time for a uh, jury day and at the end of a project where you will finish your six-month period and you will have your results. Uh, your scientific advisor will be asked to provide some feedback, a uh, short note about uh, your uh, solution and uh, about the goals you reached during this six month period. Um, Teresi Parisova asks, uh, can we have our company cooperation with the, uh, the university within the program? Um, well, it depends uh, on the details of cooperation. Uh, basically, um, only single entities are eligible to apply. So, uh, no consortia uh, as uh, participants in this program. Uh, but, of course, you can mention that uh, you will have support or you will have cooperation from university as well. But this university cannot obtain any money from, from Elise. Um, another question from Hans uh, Jorgen Hendrickson. Uh, can it be an AI slash ML and a hardware combination? Yes, yes, it could be. Um, another question from Luisa Sofocleos. Can the consortium be composed by two SMEs? No, there's no consortia allowed in this open call, only single participants. So only one entity can apply, only one SME or one startup, etc. Mm, okay, um, another question uh, from Andrea and Papish. Can we apply if they are in if we are participating uh, currently in the acceleration program which will be running until um, November 2021? Um, you can apply, of course. Yes, you can apply. Um, and uh, we will check this special issue at the end uh, when we will prepare when we will preparing the subgrant agreement uh, because it may happen that uh, we start at least for example at the end of november and then you will be fi you will finish your your acceleration program so if there is no overlap it could be okay if there is uh, overlap it could cause a problem 
Mm, another question from Hobei Tem. Can we participate if we have another uh, Horizon 2020 grant, but not participating in another acceleration program? Our other project is in materials development and does not overlap for the scope of work in this grant to be completed. Yes, yes, then you can apply. Uh, you will be asked uh, to provide details of your previous project and we'll check carefully if uh, the task and the goal are different. But if they are, yes, you can apply. Okay, I, I'm checking the question because we have quite a lot, so I don't want to be repetitive and checking uh, if maybe by chance we answered already. Um, Another question from Louis Gro. Could you detail the timeline and the expected date for the pitch day? Also, how quickly do you expect the 60,000 to be awarded? Okay, so uh, uh, the consensus meeting to select uh, 24 finalists for, for jury day is planned for September. So you should receive some information around mid of September, and then you will have at least two weeks to prepare yourself for the jury day. Maybe it will be longer, it will depend on, uh, on the detailed timeline of the um, Alice Consortium. So uh, the jury day should be um, between end of September and the first half of October. Mm, another question, uh, could you please show again the slide about the ideal project? Yes, um, I'll try to share my screen again. I think also, uh, Ula, maybe uh, if you will allow, maybe we can send this presentation a few days uh, after uh, the, uh, the Q&A, so the all uh, attendees would have an access to it. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, Yes, Lily, confirm, but you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. Okay. So, which one? This one slide. I. Yeah, the I, about the ideal project. Correct. Yes. So this is this is a slide. Yes. So um, to repeat what was said uh, when reviewing this slide, so we are looking for some projects that are based on or show some use cases of machine learning technologies uh, should be at the to it. TRL and TRL level of 6-7 and uh, has some scientific advisor assigned or invited. Um, okay, another, uh, by the way, we um, three minutes left until the end of the Q&A is just informing and we have really a lot of questions. So I believe we will not be able to answer all of them. <laughs> so just informing um, on the attendees, uh, but yeah, let's just uh, maybe answer a couple more and uh, and, uh, and then later, um, uh, the, the people who would have some questions, they can contact uh, through the email, right, uh, Ula? And, yes. Um, okay. Um, uh, so uh, another question does the, uh, from Luigi Palumbo, does the project need to be aimed at the direct revenue generation? We want to improve our prototype that helps people, oh, sorry, yeah, it was, it was already. Um, uh, is uh, this a question from Irene Bayana? Is subcontracting allowed during the project? Yes, uh, it will be allowed, but it should be something really small, and not core uh, not core activity should be uh, subcontracted. Um, okay. Um, um, a question from Bryce uh, Kabora. Uh, is it mentioned that the scientific advisor uh, should have connections with the applicants? Uh, what are the criteria? Shouldn't have any connection, any formal links, so any agreement, any um, agreement between them, despite NDA agreement. This is the criteria. Um, mm -hmm. Another question from Javier Arufat. Like other EU programs, can we use resources from a link to our third parties? Yes, uh, to perform your project, yes. Um, it was mentioned that uh, you can use uh, uh, any third party resources, IP, but it should be clearly stated that uh, you have access to these this resources and that you are allowed to use uh, third party resources. So in the application, you should state it with. Okay, um, so let's just a uh, few more questions. We can uh, finish the Q&A. Another question is from Efsa Stratios Gaves. 
should the application focus on the technical or the commercial part uh, when it comes to describing about the innovation and excellence? Um, well, it should be in balance. So we will take into account both aspects. Technical, uh, it must be a good technical proposal to be selected, and then we will check if it's it has some chance to be commercialized uh, and has chance to be uh, well uh, implemented on the market. Um, Stefan Conras uh, uh, asks, the application requires to have technology at a higher state of uh, readiness as well as funding, but can uh, their cooperation with the advisors still be used uh, uh, to develop a high-end AI-based solution that would be cutting edge, used for developing of uh, a new feature of existing tech? Yes, 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 this, this could be, but you have some project, some existing product and you would like to impl implement some machine learning or AI uh, technologies to make them more competitive, to address new market and so on, to improve the project. Yes, exactly, it could be the case. Okay, and maybe the last question uh, from Adrian Babish. The funding is provided only for the technical AI work or also for business implementation of the work? Uh, it depends on how you design your work plan. Uh, you will be asked in application form to provide uh, for work plan. So what uh, do you want to achieve on each stage? And it could differ between projects. So in one project, you would like to focus on working on some technical aspect. In some proposal, you would like to work on technical aspects, but we need to allocate some money for um, adjusting your project to the market. So it, it will depend, but this is not limited. Okay. But remember, the core of this project is to develop AI or machine learning application solutions. So most of the money should go to, uh, to this aspect. But of course, if you would be able to justify properly that you will need um, to spend money for any other aspect, it will be still okay. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, Ula, for finding time to answer the questions. We received really a lot of it, and unfortunately, we are not capable to, to answer them all during this Q&A session, because we, we are supposed to, to end already. But yeah, if any of you will have any questions, just write it, uh, uh, write an email. Uh, maybe, Ula, you can show the, the last slide with the, uh, with the email address. Um, if you have it here and uh, oh, no, okay. but I can um, yeah. So um, okay, maybe I will send it in the chat. Uh, it will be info that Elise uh, fundingbox dot com, right? Uh, so right. Okay, yes, I will send here. So if you need transfer applicants, so you will find it also yeah. there. Okay, great. So I, I sent here in the chat. So anyone who has uh, some questions, you can write it uh, uh, down there. And uh, and yeah, just reminding that uh, just a few weeks left until the deadline. So uh, please uh, check uh, check all all um, um, all sections and everything. Even you click submitted. Uh, please uh, have a look uh, and double check because you can still edit the application form before the deadline. And um, and yeah. <laughs> So do you have um, something else to say, Ula? Or, uh... well, thank you thank you so much for your uh, uh, participation and interest in this open call and good luck with preparing of your application. Yes, thank you so much uh, for uh, participating. Uh, thank you, Ula, for, uh, for this Q&A. And uh, yeah, I, I wish you good luck at the uh, um, submitting application. Good <laughs> so, luck. Have good luck, bye-bye. Bye.